you want to stay tuned because I've got some rare footage never published before. It's my footage. Anyway, here in the Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, Paragraph 5, reads as followed, and listen very carefully. It's more than just being 35 years of age. No person except a natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of the Constitution shall be eligible to that office of president. Neither shall any person be eligible to that office who shall not have attained to the age of 35 years and been a resident for 40, I'm sorry, 14 years. So there's three requirements besides being alive and breathing. You must be naturally born, and we now know, because McCain admits it, he was not naturally born in any of the 50 states. He was born in Panama. Ipso facto, McCain doesn't qualify. It doesn't say, oh, but if your father was a Navy admiral, then, oh, then there is an exception. It doesn't say that here. And what do we know about Barack Barry Obama, who was born under a different name, or the name was changed to Sotero? He was born in Mombasa, Kenya, actually in the General Provincial Hospital overlooking the Indian Ocean on the coast of Kenya in a town called Mombasa, a pretty big town, actually. So, being born in Kenya, Obama does not qualify. What did it say again? No person except a natural born citizen. That's why people born in foreign countries have to be naturalized. Hello. We can find no record of Obama being naturalized. <coughs> or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption. So, they made an exception. That if you had been living in the United States at the time 200 years ago, not me, not you, not Star, not Uncle Sam. Well, maybe Uncle Sam. You were here 200 years ago, weren't you, Uncle Sam? Oh, yes. Yeah, he was here 200 years ago. You thought he was a paper cutout. No, this is this is the real Uncle Sam here. You can actually touch him and feel him. He breathes. He lives. Right. <laughs> See? Natural born. Excuse me. There's a lawsuit by an attorney who's also a Democrat, by the way, named... Berg, and Berg has filed this lawsuit in a federal court in Pennsylvania saying, please show us his real authenticated birth certificate or take Obama off the ballot. Obama has a fake Hawaiian birth certificate, which he has now removed from his website, at least last time I checked, because people have checked up on it. And guess what? Obama, his own sister, his own grandmother, said they were present at the hospital in Mombasa, Kenya, when he was born. So how could he have been born in Hawaii? So you got two people, not one, two, two major parties. I guess I don't need to read the Constitution. Just read your Constitution. It's there, people. It doesn't say there's an exception because he's a nice, smooth-talking, Harvard-educated black man. It doesn't say that. Or if your father was a Navy admiral, you'll make an exception. It doesn't say that. Here's my problem with these guys. If we keep making exceptions to the Constitution and ignoring it, pretty soon it won't matter. Then you will have chaos. Then you will have martial law, which we're pretty much under already. At least Nancy Pelosi said so within the last month. And I think if you check YouTube, put in martial law, Nancy Pelosi, you'll pull up some video clips that you've never heard of. Gentlemen's time has expired. The gentleman from Texas. Speaker, I ask permission to arrest, address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I also come to the floor today to talk about this $700 billion bill that's in front of us. I use the term bill advisedly because we have seen no bill. We are here debating talking points on perhaps what is one of the most largest, the largest fundamental change in our nation's financial system in its history. And House Republicans have been cut out of the process. Not only have we been cut out of the process, we've also been derided by the leadership of the Democratic Party and called unpatriotic for not participating. Mr. Speaker, I have been thrown out of more meetings in this Capitol in the last 24 hours than I ever thought possible as a duly elected representative of 820,000 citizens of North Texas. Mr. Speaker, politics is a full contact sport, and I understand that, but it is a full contact sport in the light of day 
the public arena. Since we didn't have hearings, since we didn't have markups, let's at least put this legislation up on the internet for 24 hours. That's what Thomas was made for. Let's do that and let the American people see what we have done in the dark of night. After all, I have not gotten any more mail, any more emails on any other subject than this one that is before us today. Mr. Speaker, I understand we're under martial law, as declared by the Speaker last night. I think it's ironic. House Republicans have not been needed for a single thing in this House to assure passage for the last 22 months. And today, we're going to be asked to vote for a bill for political cover because Democrats are too weak to stand up to the, their Speaker. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired. The gentleman from New Jersey. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs> The Homeland Terrorism Preparedness Bill. Uh, said bill requests emergency response funding up to and including, uh, I'm sorry, this section is classified, uh, dollars to prepare for a national level terrorist attack and or attack from classified. Funding for first responder personnel and vehicles would be doubled if said attack leads to more than 80% of the national population being affected by classified. This funding shall commence in conjunction with the first attack on um, classified, or the first large-scale outbreak of classified, dependent upon which comes first. Civilian and military units shall be trained in containment and combat of classified, including irradiated classified, with possibility of classified airborne, classified flesh-eating, classified, and or all of the above, in such event as classified spewing, classified escape, are released or otherwise become uncontrollable. Air Force units may also be directed to combat said classified due to their enormous size and otherworldly strength. Should event occur in urban areas, Jesus, that, that's classified, far surpassing our darkest nightmares. Should casualties uh, exceed classified body disposal actions, shall be halted and associated resources shall be reallocated to classified underground, classified protected birthing centers. A new Bill of Rights shall be drafted and approved by classified. A new Bill of Rights shall be drafted and approved by classified. A new Bill of Rights shall be drafted and approved by classified. A new Bill of Rights shall be drafted and approved by classified. Mr. Speaker, I understand we're under martial law, as declared by the Speaker last night. I think it's ironic. Mr. Speaker, I understand we're under martial law, as declared by the Speaker last night. I think it's ironic. You didn't know we were under martial law, did you, Uncle Sam? No, I didn't. Are we supposed to be under a dictatorship? No, we sure are not. Well, that's what martial law does. And it's all based on a lie that we're having a war, an endless war, against a foe we can never catch. What a cute trick. For me, people... I recommend you vote all incumbents out, but vote for somebody who's at least naturally born, 35 years old, and lived in this country 14 years. How many years have you lived in here, Uncle Sam? Gee, I lost count. I've been here a couple hundred years. A couple hundred years. Now, Uncle Sam would qualify to be president. Guess what you get? You get Palin as president. Is that what you want? Somebody who's governor of a state with fewer people than the city of Milwaukee. Now here's one called Chili Dog.